Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm good, ma'am. Okay. So before we start, uh, may I know about yourself in just short? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm Harshita Hirawat, and uh, I'm born and brought up in Howrah, West Bengal. And I have completed my schooling from Mahadevi Villa World Academy. And uh, I'm uh, my hobbies include reading books, drawing, painting, dancing, and any kind of creative work, sports, etc. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Let's start with the first question. Okay, we will have two uh, maths question and then few um, your dreams and aspirations. What are them? We'll discuss about them. Okay, so let's start with the first question. Okay. I'll put the question in the chat itself. Let me know if you don't understand anything. Okay, read it out and then we'll discuss. Can I let you know the answer? Sure, we'll discuss the solution. Have you come up with the answer? Yes, ma'am. Okay, explain the solution first. Uh, so it's given that we have two kinds of mangoes, Alfonso mangoes and Papus mangoes. So 10% of Alfonso are rotten and 20% of Papus are rotten. So uh, it is said that if one Alfonso mango is chosen and two Hapus mangoes are chosen from the lot randomly, then what is the probability that at least one of the three mangoes will be rotten inside? So either one can be rotten and either two can be rotten or all the three can be rotten. Correct. So the first case if we take that uh, Alfonso is rotten, so 10 by 100 because 10% of these mangoes are rotten and the uh, two Papus mangoes are not rotten. So 80 by 100 into 80 by 100. Correct. That is the first case. Then we have uh, one Alfonso is rotten and the other Hapus is rotten and the third Hapus is not rotten. Okay, correct. So 10 by 100, 20 by 100 and 80 by 100 we'll multiply. Correct. Then we'll have another case where uh, both Alfonso and Hapus mangoes, all the three are rotten. So 10 by 100, and 20 by 100 twice we we'll multiply. Okay. And the next case we'll have well, uh, where uh, Alfonso is not rotten. So that'll be 90 by 100 and uh, one hapus is rotten and one hapus is not rotten. So okay. 20 by 100 and 80 by 100. Okay. And then we'll have another case well, uh, where uh, one Alfonso is not rotten and the other two hapus are rotten. Okay. So 90 by 100 and 20 by 100 twice. Okay. Then we'll have uh, the, we'll multiply all the numerators and then we'll add and the denominator we'll have 100 uh, three times. 100 into 100 into 100. But did we consider that case like uh, uh, Alfonso is not rotten, first hapus mango is also not rotten, second hapus mango is rotten. Okay, so we'll multiply twice. Yes. So it's like one, two, three. One yeah. is rotten, two and three is not. Then two is yeah. rotten, one and three is not. Then mm. three is rotten, one and two are not. Correct? Mm. So what it is, are we getting total? So uh, in that case, the uh, where one Alfonso is not rotten and one Hapus is rotten and one Hapus is not rotten, we'll mm. multiply it twice. And for the same thing, where one Alfonso is rotten, one hapus is rotten and one hapus is not rotten. So that also we'll have to multiply twice. So total we are getting. So it's for, uh, 0 0.424. Correct. Okay, we'll go to the next question. Mom, can I explain my approach? Yes. 
So before going to the approach, you explain me what did you understand with the question? So uh, according to the, to the question we have that we'll have to create a weekly timetable and the students have 10 subjects in total and uh, each day has five classes and there are five days, Monday to Friday. And on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, the students cannot have two subjects for the two consecutive classes. Matlab, one and two, well, the first two classes, second, third, third, fourth and fourth, fifth cannot have the same subject on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. OK, so uh, what I am thinking is first we can. Take the combination of, for all the five days and five classes, so it will be 10 C5 into five. 10 C5 for one day mm -hmm. and five days. So into five mm. and then we subtract for Monday, Wednesday and uh, Friday, the condition which is given. Okay. Okay. So we can have, so if we have one first and second day, second and third day, uh, first and second class, second and third class, third and fourth class and fourth and fifth class. So we can have uh, four cases where the uh, subjects are uh, consecutive. Okay, so four times uh, and 10 subjects we are having. So we can have this for 10 subjects. So four multiplied by 10. Okay, okay. And then like if we are considering one consecutive thing, then we, ha we have left three, uh, we'll have combination left for the other three classes. So for mm -hmm. that we'll do 9C3. Because one subject is chosen for consecutive thing and nine subjects are left. So for the other three classes, 9C3. Nine 9C3. Nine uh, we have nine subjects, I agree. But why three? You have four classes left, right? No, first, like the two classes are taken for consecutive. Consecutive subjects. Suppose, Suppose we are discussing about Monday only, right? On Monday, we can have five classes, correct? Yes. First class, we have the option to select the subject from 10 subjects. Correct? But now, second class, we can choose from nine subjects only. Right? Yes. Then from the third class, again, we can choose from the option from nine subjects. Hmm. Because we can choose subject one as well in the third class also, right? Yes. So same how for fourth class also, we have the option to select from nine subjects. And then for the fifth class as well, we'll have the option to select from nine subjects. So it's like 10 into nine to the power four, correct? Then why can't we say that we have the... Uh... We can choose from all the 10 subjects for all the five classes. Like you're saying 10 into 9 to the power 4. Mm. So why not 10 to the power 5? Because then consecutive can be first two classes as well. OK, I'll give you an example. Consecutive means what? Suppose we have 10 subjects marked with 1 to 10 only. OK, yes. now yes. we have five classes in first class. We chose the subject one only. Yes. Okay. In second class, what are the options now? From two to ten, we can choose any subjects. Correct? Yes. So nine options we have. For the third class, how many options do we have now? Except two, we can choose any subject. That is from three to ten and one. You cannot choose okay. two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, got it. Same thing goes for the fourth class as well. Don't choose the uh, subject which is done in the third class. Yes. Got it? Yes, yes. That's how you can maintain that it's not consecutive. Okay. So, whatever uh, possibilities we'll have for Monday, the same will be applicable for Wednesday and Friday as well, right? So, so we multiply by three. Now you calculate for Tuesday and Thursday. 
that is simple because we don't that have any 25 into 2 correct so what's the total number now yes so uh, when i'm doing 10 c5 i'll have 10 9 8 7 6 by 5 factorial so uh, here i'm also getting 7 as a prime factor but in the question it is said that we will have to express it, express it in the form of 2x 3y and 5z so where will the 7 go okay don't calculate it like that you don't need to go into factorial things just simply think uh for 10 c5 can we do it like this uh, 10 to the power 5 into 2 why into 2 that is because two days we have tuesday and thursday okay and it's simply maths is all simple things you don't need to every time go whatever you're understanding just put it into that right okay right so now for monday wednesday and friday what did we figure it out it's like 10 into 9 to the power 4 yes right? now into 3 because monday wednesday and friday hmm. right now calculate this total will be multiplication of the both only right yes yes so it's 2 to the power 7 3 to the power 9 and 5 to the power 6. Okay. Okay. Yeah, good. Now, we are done with the maths question. I have some theoretical kind of questions only about yourself. Okay. So, you must have assessed yourself like, so what do you think um, are your top two strengths and top two weaknesses? My two strengths are that I'm very ambitious and passionate about what I do. And I'm very hardworking until and unless I complete my task, I'm into it. Like I have to get to the final thing. And uh, one weakness is that sometimes I get nervous, but then I try to uplift myself. I uh, do something which I'm very confident about. So I get my confidence at my peak and then I again do that work. So I'm able to complete it okay and one thing i think is that uh strengths and weaknesses is everything in my mind if i uh, think that i am able to do it then i'll do it and if i overthink and i get nervous that becomes my weakness again correct okay so how do you think that uh, this computer science program at scalar school of technology will help you achieve your goals so uh i think Computer science is mostly about problem solving. Mm. So if you want to make a career out of it, you will have to focus on the main things. So in Scalar School of Technology, uh, I'm getting to learn. I've, I'll have hands-on experience with projects. And uh, from day one, I'm only uh, focused on computer science and not other subjects like physics, chemistry, bio. So that will help me achieve it in a more efficient way and also the teachers i think they're very friendly like one of them is you okay so, so i think that will help me uh reach my goal more uh, more easily okay so anything other than this like anything specific about the program which you think will benefit you the most or you like the most one thing I like the most is that all the te uh, teachers over here are mm. industry experts, mm. unlike uh, other colleges where they have teachers who have done PhD and have more research based opinion. So that will help me the most. Okay, so why did you decide to uh, come for Scala? Because first is this uh, instructor thing and the second is it's also located in Bangalore, Silicon okay. Valley of India. So uh, we'll have a little bit of competitive environment and also a positive environment for IT industry 
and also the placement opportunities can be good over here so that is my story okay that's it from my side no further questions any questions from your side one thing i would like to ask is uh, that i see myself as a scalar student already so if you can just help me uh, with the challenges that students can face in scalar and how can they get overcome that okay so one thing um, i have been mentoring scalar school of technology students past one year the previous batch okay so what i experience with them is a uh, course will be a bit of overwhelming for the first time because it's all new for you all right don't give up and be disciplined that will only lead to your success many people will leave it like if one test didn't go well they get demotivated and leave it like why should i do it it's fine one test is not good try for the second one keep this in mind always whatever score you are getting try to maintain that or always increase that just fix it in your mind that i don't have to go below this that's it no matter how and uh, be consistent and uh, always complete your homeworks on time simple as that nothing else is required okay mom okay okay it was Take really good interacting with you thank you Thank you all the best thank you bye bye